this time, and I ask you to stand with me and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and the next item is for presentations. We we're honored to have several students and staff for recognition this evening. I'll turn it over to Dr. Battershow. Okay, we're going to start with Brittany. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and I hope it's a, a model for the school district because Brittany had called and she wanted to come in and some of our special education care professionals at the middle school. And I hope that other folks in the school district will do the same thing. When you have people that just go way over and above the call of duty and their hearts are in the right places, then this is a great place to say thank you for what you do. So I'm going to turn it over to Brittany. Okay. All right. Um, so at the beginning of this month on April 3rd was National Care, Care, Care Professionals Day. Um, and our wonderful PTO presented them with a small gift. Um, but like Dr. Battershell said, I felt like they deserve more than that because of all of the things that they do on our campus. Um, I'm, I'll get them up here and they'll be mad at me for getting them up here. But um, Carrie Cruz, um, Sally, we call her Miss Van, because um, I will butcher Van Den I will always butcher her last name. I apologize, Miss Van. Oh, come on. Come on. Um, They're as shy as some of the middle school kids. Melissa Serrata and Star Freeman. Um, and just a, a very, very short list of the things that these four amazing ladies do is they provide our inclusion classroom support for our students receiving special ed services. That includes reading tests, helping with assignments, um, and then obviously y'all know the state of subs, um, and they, these four ladies are always willing to help cover classes. Usually they're already in there helping our students anyways, and they just say, hey, just I got them. I got them today. And um, as uh, as many of us wear all the different hats, these ladies probably wear the most crowns and deserve the most jewels in their crowns for, <laughs> for all that they do. Um, they're always ready and willing to help out whenever and wherever they're asked to. And as you can tell, they have the greatest team shirts ever. Um, <laughs> always. They always have really fun stuff. Um, and this one was perfect for today because the uh, our, our campus definitely shines because of these four ladies and all that they do. So from me to you, I appreciate you all very, very much. Thank you so much. I can never, never thank you enough for, for all, all you do for all of our teachers, and it's very much appreciated. This is a very, very, very awesome. <laughs> uh, our respect and admiration for what you do with a population that sometimes has challenges, and, and you do it in you always have a smile. I see you in the halls and you always smile. So I'm hoping that you get something back because our kids, I think they have so much to give. So thank you all. And these are certificates for you. I'd like for you to give them to me. And then I'd like for you to come around, shake the board members' hands, they like to shake your hands. Oh, I'll get a fresh picture. Oh, <laughs> Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Kind of inch toward the front, and then if you all will stand either with them back there or in front of that table, either way. I'm gonna roll my, I'm gonna roll my, I'm gonna roll my, Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Success that we had in the girls and boys program this year, but I just like to just say it again, please, if you don't mind. Uh, we had we had the most girls ever powerlifting this year. We had 17 girls, uh, which is the most we've ever had uh, participate. Uh, and the way the girls association is now, actually, all 17 of those girls ended up lifting at the regional meet, uh, with six of them meddling. Uh, we didn't have any advance to the state level. Uh, but there were two, that we had three that ended up third place that were real close that were fighting for it all the way down to the, to the last deadlift, trying to qualify and get in that second spot and get to the state meet. So how, uh, many, so, how many medals? Uh, we had six girls medal, wow. six out of 17. Uh, and again, the Girls Association breaks it down to 3A Division two, kind of like football does. And so we're competing against really a small group of schools in our region, and, and it's a tough deal. I mean, the, our region and girls powerlifting in that level, at, at Division II level, is very, 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 very competitive. So our girls did a really, really good job. Really proud of them. Our boys, we had, oh, I said 22 or 23 boys total throughout the year lift. Uh, we had seven of them qualify for the regional meeting. Now, boys is all of 3A, all of Class 3A in our region. So big, bigger schools, smaller schools, all of them. So, again, with us being one of the smallest, and we had seven, we had seven end up lifting, qualifying and lifting at the regional meet. We had six of those medal at the regional meet, uh, which was, out, it was an outstanding day. It was an outstanding day for us. Uh, Darson, come on up. Darson finished second in the 123 weight class uh, to qualify for the state meet uh, last year. He qualified, went to the state meet, ended up third place in the state. Uh, this year, the weight class was a little more challenging. Uh, he ended up seventh, 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 right? Seventh overall in the state of Texas in class 3A in, in his weight class. Uh, I went back and looked at how many at how many lifters competed in that weight class throughout the throughout the state, and there was over 150 lifters that lifted in that weight class during the season. Uh, and Doris finished seventh. Uh, and I think that's an, an outstanding achievement. Uh, some, he's a, a tireless worker. He came to us from a school that shall not be named down the road a little bit a couple of years ago. Thank goodness. Thank goodness that we got him from there because he's been a tremendous asset to our program, all of our programs, because he's always willing to help out no matter what sport it is. Uh, no matter what it is, he's willing to help. Like today, all our returning powerlifters, we started a fundraiser. He's hanging out. He goes, well, Coach D, can I, can I get in on this too? Can I help out? See if I can raise some money for these guys for next year. I'm like, sure, Darson, I guess so. And he's already got some donations coming in. And so, uh, you know, that just speaks to him and his character. But just a, a great young man, a young man that I'm going to miss personally. Uh, he's, he's, he's a favorite of mine. Uh, just because of how hard he works and how much pride he puts into everything he does. Darson Daniel. Come in all shapes and sizes. There's all weight classes. Um, definitely all of the guys who make it to the top three or even the top five or the top ten at state. Um, this is becoming more of a competitive sport every year. We get more and more lifters that make it to the state level. Um, but those guys that make that top ten, that top five, that top three, it is their it's their pride and joy to lift to um, just kind of push themselves and their limits every day. Um, and that's for a lot of us. That's a, that's like something that we really we really pride ourselves in is that we we put everything we have into our lifting. So I would say just if I could give you one thing that to make it to that level and be able to be competitive is that you 
you absolutely put your heart and soul into lifting. So how many hours a week do you think that you lift and sing? It would be it would be way more if I didn't kick him out of the way. <laughs> uh, and he lives at home. And Andy lives at home too. Oh, my oh man. <sighs> I I lived in, you know, last year when Coach was kicking me out every single day and wouldn't <laughs> let me stay. It was um I think I counted up to twenty lifts a week and I averaged about an hour and a half on those lifts, so whatever that comes out to. That's supposed to be a work week for most most people. <laughs> well, it's, it's, more, it's diet. Yeah, and there is there is also that too. There's a lot of dieting, and um, Lord knows I hate running, but I did a whole lot of that this year. <laughs> um, I I made a decision to commit to a weight class, and we had to make that happen. So mm. there's a lot that goes into it. So, what are your plans for next year? Um. So I had this. Uh, I had my plan all set up. I was going to go to a great college in Nebraska. Uh, they're number one in the nation for powerlifting. I was really proud to go there. And, um, they gave me a, a pretty good scholarship, and I couldn't justify the amount of debt I would have to go into even with the scholarship, out of state tuition, and whatnot, private four year. Yeah. So I'm continuing my powerlifting at uh, Texas State. They have a club there. Nice. They compete in the USAPL um, district there, and uh, I'm going to compete in that club and stay business if I need to. Excellent. Outstanding. Yeah. Above Kelly. <laughs> That's what Rod is doing about. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations, Rod. <laughs> and then our other presentation tonight, again, these were a little different tonight, is we had a company that just did something way over and above expectations. There were, there were no expectations. You didn't expect to get anything. So I'm going to give it to Cindy because she's the one that really interfaced with this. Well, most of you know Jennifer. If not, she graduated. What year, Jennifer? 94. 94. Um, <laughs> and we're related. Um, our dads are cousins. So um, we hang out quite a bit. And we've been buying some things from Morco. And that's where she has uh, worked for several years. We bought the uh, library furniture from her. We got started there and then she helped us purchase the library uh, tables this last year also. Um, so we've done quite a bit of business with them as well. And then everything else that we're starting to buy, we were getting it um, from her, buying it. And then it comes there time that they have all of their samples that they're about to get rid of. So I asked her what I could say. <laughs> I went dumpster diving, basically. She said, do you want this? And I said, yes. Um, it looks great. We'll go and take it while we furnish. If you haven't been to the elementary, there is new furniture in the elementary, which they donated. Um, and then we got furniture in the middle school in different places. Then the most, the best part was um, they were taking some chairs out of one of their facilities and they were on a truck, literally. And she said, you want these chairs? I said, yes. <laughs> there were a hundred gray chairs, just like we had bought for the cafeteria, um, but they're gray instead of black. So there's a hundred of those chairs. And then as we were packing these things out, there's these stacks of boxes and they are desktops. Well, I don't have any legs. I said, she said, do you want those? I said, yes. <laughs> so the guys packed those up and put them on the trailer. Um, and then they started disabling um, other legs on tables that we weren't going to take because they were throwing it away. So I went back to the office and started calculating all of this. And it was over $60,000 worth of things that we have. Um, so I have, my kiddos have been putting desks together, putting screws into them. We've had tables in Coach Seebeck's room. We've got desks going up to Coach McMillan's room. We're going to even have tables to go into the other math room, and I think we'll have some other ones left over. So as we are getting ready for the bond, there won't be so much that has to be replaced just from just saying, hey, do you want this? So I have bought her and her crew some things. So come on up, Jennifer. 
um, some things. So we appreciate it yes, and keep totally. us always sure in your hands. <laughs> I sure will, of course. Thank you. Of course. We appreciate it. That's it for the presentations. Mm -hmm. All right, we move on to item four for public comments. I don't believe anybody signed up for that tonight. So we can skip on to item five, which is our information items. And the first is the superintendent's report. Uh, enrollment and attendance update. Uh, the attendance remains steady. Um, the enrollment remains steady. Attendance is down a little bit, but that's again very, very typical for this time of year. Uh, our high for enrollment for the year was 891. Uh, we're currently at 883. Uh, so not much difference there. And then underneath the attendance rate, we're at, we're, our high was at 96.66%, and we're now at 93.39. I don't like them to get it below 94, but you just kind of limit it on what you can control at that point in time. So that's the summary of those two things. Uh, financial report, uh, Tracy's at TASCO right now. Uh, so if you have any questions, then let her know. But our ending balance for uh, the month of March was $7,533,745.02. Our long-term interest rates are between 5% and 5.48%. Underneath your summary board report, 67.75% of projected revenue has been realized and 55.97% of projected expenditures has been realized. So expenditures are low, lower than revenue, which is always a really nice thing to have. Um, your tax collections through March, uh, and tax notices just came out or are coming out over the next few days. Oh, look me. So our M&O collections today are 87.16%, and our INS is 71.43%. Um, and that, uh, my next piece is for training hours, and that has to be the work All right, so I'll go through the... The board training hours and per BE legal uh, at the last regular board meeting before an election of trustees, the board president shall announce the name of each board member who has completed the required continuing education, who has exceeded the required hours of continuing education, and who is deficient in meeting the required continuing education um, as of the anniversary of the date of each board member's election or appointed to the board or to your anniversary of his or her previous training as applicable. Uh, the announcement shall state that completing the required continuing education is a basic obligation and the expectation of any board member under SBOE rule. <coughs> the minutes of the last regular board meeting held before an election of trustees must reflect these hours. So we've got our, got our chart here for everybody. And my name, Keith Caldwell, is the first one on there. And for the local district orientation, that was not required for me. The intro to the TEC, I completed that. And sexual harassment was not required for me, nor was cybersecurity. Uh, the school safety for two hours every two years, I was, that was completed. The child abuse prevention and, and trafficking, that was completed. And evaluating and improving student achievement was completed as well. And the post legislation was not required. And team building, uh, six plus hours uh, was completed. And so for the year, I exceeded the requirement. Next up is Mr. J.P. Shrevinka. The local district orientation was not required for him. The intro to the TEC was completed. Sexual harassment and cybersecurity were not required for JP. The school safety uh, training was completed. The child abuse prevention and trafficking was completed. 
and evaluating and improving student achievement was also completed. Uh, the post legislation was not required for JP either. And the team building of six plus hours was completed and Mr. Shubinka also exceeded his obligation. Next up is Mr. John Cox, Cody Cox. Uh, the local district orientation was required for Cody. He completed that. The intro to the TEC was completed as well. Uh, sexual harassment and security were not required. The school safety was required and he completed that. The child abuse prevention and trafficking was completed. Uh, evaluating and improving student achievement was completed. Post legislation was not required. The team building of six plus hours was completed. And Mr. Cox also exceeded uh, his obligation for the year. Ms. Sarah Fox, the local district orientation was not required. The intro to the TEC was required and completed. Sexual harassment and cybersecurity were not required. Uh, school safety was completed. Child abuse prevention and trafficking was completed. Uh, evaluating and improving student achievement was completed. Post legislated not required. The team building of six plus hours was completed as well. And Ms. Fox exceeded her obligation for the year. Next up is Mr. Chad Green. The local district orientation was not required. And the intro to TEC uh, was required and completed. Sexual harassment was completed. Cybersecurity was completed. School safety was completed. Child abuse uh, prevention and, and trafficking was completed. Evaluating and improving student achievement was also completed. Post legislative was not was not required. And the team building of six plus hours was completed, and Mr. Green exceeded his obligation for the year. Uh, next up is Mr. Mark. Uh, the local district orientation was not required. He did complete the <coughs> TEC, he completed the sexual harassment training, he completed the cybersecurity training, completed the school safety training, completed the child abuse prevention uh, and human trafficking. Evaluating and improving the student achievement, he also completed. Post legislation was not required. And he completed the six plus hours for team building, thus exceeding the obligation for this year. And lastly is Dr. Trey Richter. His local district orientation was not required. He did complete the intro to TEC. Sexual harassment and cybersecurity were not required. He did complete the school safety uh, requirement, the child abuse and human trafficking he completed, evaluating and improving student achievement he completed, post legislation was not required, and he did also complete the six plus hours for team building, thus exceeding the required hours for his training. And therefore, if you can't up with all that as I was reading through there, <laughs> everybody did exceed and, and go over and above their obligated training. Uh, hours for the 2023-2024 year. Congratulations to those local districts. That was a lot of hours. That all cut down. That was a lot of hours. All right. Uh, the remainder of my quarter in governance, uh, May the third, will be Duana's um, Duana Brashear's first contract day. Um, there were some questions remaining on things for her contract. I've gone through that with Keith. I'll be busy with her Wednesday. She'll be here anyway so that we can begin the middle school principal process. And so we will go through that. You may have to have a call meeting if there are any question marks about things on that. Chances are about 99%. They're not questions on her end, but just ironing out a few details that, that were not talked about at that time. Um, we will overlap on that day, on May the 3rd, and then I will be gone. Um, she will be at the May 20th board meeting, so this will be my last board meeting with you. The Director of Accountability position is open. There are 13 applications for that, so we have begun that uh, process of screening those applications. Uh, middle School Principal, our first meeting with the screening committee, with the interview committee from um, Rogers Middle School will be this coming Wednesday. Um, Innovative teaching grants, eight were funded. It was an amazing day. It was just so much fun. It was just so much fun. Every campus applied. 
they gave out, I think it was about $2,600 in like grants this year, and they're going to have a fundraiser in fall. So I hope that everybody participates in that. Um, that money will go towards increasing the number of detention grants. And if there, and Carol is on that board, and when Carol retires, she's going to remain on that board, which I think is just a great thing for the school district. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, and then the goal is, you know, once the, the innovative grants are the innovative teaching grants are done, that we can put some more into student scholarships. And so that's the goal for next year. Um, the Interquest dog contract has been completed and has been sent in. Security audit was completed. Thank you again, Carol. Uh, we had 100% on that, so that was a really, really good visit. Um, Transfer student portal is open. TTAP for next year, and that is the beta test for the state testing program. We will have three subject areas. We've seen this before, sixth grade math, eighth grade social studies, and algebra one. Uh, the TIA application. This is one that you will get a briefing on at your May board meeting. This is a complicated process. We went to a committee of teachers, those that some of them would qualify for TIA if we had it, and that's the teacher incentive allotment is what TIA stands for. Um, and then we had some other folks that were interested and had served on curriculum council. They all decided to go for cohort H for next year. Um, when you do that, with your new superintendent and staff, they got to hustle because there's a lot of things that have to happen during the summer. They have to have a rubric to score people because you have got to have it extremely fair. Um, the group made the decision that they would do individual TIA uh, allotments and not group allotments, which makes it simpler. Group allotments are like if a teacher for a grade level hits it, her money is allotted by the, for the whole grade level. You get into problems when you get in the secondary because what is a grade level you know, when you have individual content in there? But they did make that decision. So May, Amanda will be here and she will be going through TIA with you. And that's that's a big pop, that's a big topic for you guys. Um, summer school, there are the dates listed there. Summer school June 3 through 6 and 3 through 13. Math adoption is on hold because the state is doing their state textbook adoption next spring. There's no reason to duplicate it. Again, district unification day. Bring neighbors, whoever we need people here. Um, horticulture department, matter of fact, Ms. Richard Vinka's daughter uh, gave us a great plan for our plants. And so today, Jason went over to start purchasing plants. We have trees coming, the trees will be put into the holes, but we'll need to put mulch on them. Uh, we can back it, back that food program. We have 22 students that are served. Um, any applications need to go through Tanya Doffrey. <coughs> and something that will need to be done in the future is. is a, more of a process to apply for that. Right now, we don't have a real tight process for that. So that's kind of it for Superintendent's report. Do you have any other questions for me? All right. All right. Next item. Remember, is this the uh, consent agenda? Agenda out of six. And uh, I kind of laugh at this one. I didn't forget about all the board meetings, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot of meetings in the in the consent agenda, so everybody get a chance to look through all those. There's a few of them. All right, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move. Sorry. Got a motion from Mr. Mark, second from Mr. Green. Any other discussion or questions on those? All right, if not, all those in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed, same sign. That motion carries. <coughs> Next is our action item 7A. And first action item is to consider uh, approval of personnel. And 7A1 is the consideration and approval of high school counselor. The Administration has recommended Sue Ellen Ramirez for the 2024-2025 High School Counselor. I have a motion to approve Sue Ellen Ramirez for the RHS Counselor for 2024-2025. Council moved. I'll second. Got a motion from Mr. Shavinka. Second from Mrs. Fox. Before you uh, say anything, Mr. Sorry. Uh, is there anything that you want to add, Dr. Murphy? I went back to look at how many applications we had, but it had already gone away. But we had a, a good pool of about five to six. Uh, we brought back four. The committee um, 
interviewed all four uh, Friday, a couple Fridays ago. Uh, I told them to go home for the weekend, think about it. We reconvened on Monday, uh, and it was unanimous that the Brewers uh, kind of rose to the top, checked a lot of boxes, uh, bilingual. Um, she's been cross-training with Christy since October, kind of learning the, not just the social-emotional learning side of it, but also learning the master schedule, scheduling scholarships, and, and uh, that side of the counseling duties as well. <clears throat> Questions or comments on that? All right. All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, thank you, sign. Motion carries. Say no. All right. Item 7A2 is the consideration and approval of Brittany Roten. Ms. Roten is currently under contract using ESSER funds. And tonight, the administration is recommending her one of the current middle school teaching vacancies to be determined by the middle school principal. Do you wish to add anything? Yeah. Brittany has done an amazing job with our um, math intervention kids. She has put in those holes and um, helped us fill that. Our sixth graders last year didn't need the intervention this year but we're looking at our sixth graders this next year and we're really needing that intervention. Um, so the ESSER funds are there. If I can find a way to get that in there, it's gonna be powerful for those kids um, for next year. So if you can work that in some kind of way this next year, it would be very beneficial to that campus. Um, and we're hoping to see that growth continue as we can close the gaps. That sixth grade bunch is our 2020 bunch. Um, and, you know, it's great just to have her in there. Um, so I do recommend her for that position, uh, not that position, but right now I have a math position that's open as well as a SPED position that she will kind of flow into depending on where she falls. So she, she's qualified for either one. So yeah, she's got SPED, she's, she's got math, she's okay. got, she's got it all. So she's loaded. She's loaded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> loaded. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. All right. I have a motion to approve Brittany Roden for a teaching position at Rogers Middle School. Move. A second. Motion from Dr. Richter and a second from Mr. Green. All those in favor, raise your hand. All right. Motion carries 7 0. Tell us on, on some of these, these ESSER funded positions. The only reason they didn't come in March for contract renewals, we didn't have a contract for them anymore because ESSER was low. And so we needed another month to see where our vacancies started to fall. And that is the only reason they came to you, just, just a little bit. All right, the next one was item 783, which is the consideration and approval of high school teacher slash girls assistant basketball coach. Yeah, I'm going to set this up and then Charlie's going to come up and talk to you. Um, <coughs> there has been um, a lack of understanding or processes on where the board's role is and where the staff's role is on, on interview, or not on interviewing, on approving positions. You're not unusual in that. You're really not. All districts go through that. They, and you have to just really talk through, you know, who's responsible for what and it, it, what areas. And we'll give you an example tonight. Is right after our post, our school board agenda was posted for this meeting, I got two more resignations and then I got a recommendation to hire somebody, but it was already after the agenda was posted. So um, Brad was saying earlier that, you know, y'all have given Joe the opportunity and you will, you will need to do this with the new superintendent to go ahead and fill positions. Uh, unless they are positions of public interest, and that really is how the law reads, actually. Um, but with that said, it gets even harder when you bring coaching into it. And because I, I'm a mathematician, and so I think in, in mathematical terms, do you know, you know the old Venn diagrams where you have the circles and you look for what intersects? Well, when you put coaching 
a particular type of coaching that is required and maybe not one sport but other sports and where they have have any experience whatsoever and then you put in teaching fields on top of that the middle of that Venn diagram is about the size of a stick pin and I really wanted this to and Troy's going to tell you what we're what he's going to recommend for this tonight but I really wanted it to be a discussion and let y'all hear from him about how difficult it is with athletic hiring right now I think it's time extremely well spent. I don't want to go a long time, Charlie, you're not long-winded, so don't really worry about that with you. But um, <laughs> you're really not. But but I thought this would be a good time for him to talk to you all and you to ask some questions about hiring overall. So Charlie, I'm going to give it to you. Okay. <clears throat> um, before I get into it, I do want to make you all aware of that um, our, our girls basketball coach that we hired, uh, she backed out of the job. So we're um, that's where we're at with that. Um, so we're going to take, yes, Charlie, ma'am. do you feel free to say why? Um, in general, yeah, the job that she, uh, accepted, uh, last month, it would not be the job that she's walking into. I guess I can say it like that. If y'all have questions about that, you can go ahead, fire away. Um, but she's, uh, the job that she took, um, is not what what uh what it is today we're going to have a very very young team next year am i correct in saying that? yeah more I think, experienced yeah. Team. yes ma'am yes ma'am so with that in mind you know we're going to table this higher tonight uh that we had in mind for tonight um you know i just want to kind of um feel y'all in on the process that i go through and you know what i i've done with with mr craig when he was here um and obviously Things may be different moving forward. I don't know, but I'm just going to tell you all what I've done in the past is I've ha- I've handled the interviews um, and then whatever the position is, um, I, I, if it's middle school position, uh, we always sit down with Miss Smith. And if it's a high school position, I've always sat down with Mr. Moses. Um, and that's kind of, we've kind of been the team that's done that. So that's kind of how it's been done in the past. And I've always, I don't call references after we interview them. I always call references before they ever get here. So that's just how I've done it, whether that's right or wrong or indifferent, I don't know. But I always make sure and call references before they even come because I don't want to waste their time. Um, You know, with that being said, I I just want you guys to know, and y'all need to be aware of this, that I deal with it every day. Man, coaches are hard to find, extremely hard to find, okay? And um, it's not easy. Uh, Dr. Battershell kind of put it there, and she's exactly right. It's it's hard. Um, they're not out there. They're not they're not coming. Uh, they're not easy to find in Rogers. They're not easy to find in Temple. They're not easy to find in anywhere. So um, and especially girls coaches. Uh, girls coaches are few and far between now, and I, that's just how it is. Um, so just make. I hope y'all know that, that it's hard. It's hard to find coaches. Um, you know. I, I want to weigh in on that one. From, from my experience, you get a lot of people, they don't want every single night that they're gone away from their families. And that's what a lot of coaching positions are. And then you give them three different types of coaching <coughs> positions during the year, and you end one season, and you're going into another season, you're going into another season, and they never see their families. And there are people <coughs> coming out of school now that they just don't want to do that. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, we interviewed boys coaches last week. we got two, boy, two boys' jobs open right now. Interviewed a number of coaches last week. Uh, called two of them today, offered them a job, and both said, well, I've taken the jobs elsewhere. That's within a matter of, you know, two or three days. So the process is, you know, we got to go through them. But, man, you better hop on them um, quick nowadays because they're going to get snatched up by other places. That's just the way it is. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is this. You know, y'all got to trust me to hire um, who I think's best. You know, I'll read off these names. Coach Ferris, Coach Rankin, Coach Justelton, Coach Stolte, Coach Bruner. Coach Bull, Coach Zunt, Coach Rodriguez, Coach Flores, uh, Miss Coach D. You know, that's just a number of people that I've hired. And I would, I would, I would say that uh, to a man and to a woman, each of y'all would say those are pretty dang good hires. Um, so you know, that's a core of our coaching staff right there. That um, not just me, Miss Smith, Mr. Moses have hired, uh, but I feel like um, you know that needed to be said. Um, I'm going to do whatever I can to get the best coaches in here. 
Um, but I just want y'all to know how difficult it is. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of that. Appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, fire away. For, for some positions, you may only get one applicant. Correct. That's what it's come down to. So it's not like you've got lots and lots of choices. And you can say, we're not going to get that applicant. We're going to go back out. And you may get nobody else that applies. So, so I have a question. Yeah. So on this particular hire that you're wanting to recommend, what who was in on the interview and what was the process for the interview? Um, so uh, this particular person last year, uh, he came in and he met Mr. Craig. Um, so I got to know him a little bit through that. And then uh, this year it was just myself um, just because I, I got to know him a little bit over time. So um but like I said, um, you know, it was, I was afraid we might not get him if we did, you know, if we didn't. He did, so, talk, he did talk to me. Right. When we came back and we discussed it. And I did meet him last year. He was one that we did want to hire, but he went to another school. So. Right. So uh, in the name of transparency, right, since we're, we're talking about this the way we're talking about it, the last seven years have been a little difficult on trust and what we've done and how we've done it, which is one of the reasons that I got elected to the position that I'm in. So not to take anything away from what you're trying to do, it does concern me as a board member on who we're hiring and how we're hiring them. Just like this guy here, you may have thought he was a good fit. She may have thought he was a good fit, but seven of us, or at least myself, did research on him and it didn't make any sense. So it sounds like we're trying to say we're going to, we don't have a lot of applicants, but we're going to just jump out and grab whoever we want to bring in. And that doesn't make any sense. I mean, there was no vetting process. There was no checking into this guy or, I mean, no, nothing was discussed about it. So uh, it, things are going to change moving forward. I'm, I'm sure you can see that, but uh, uh, it just, it always seems like we're always down to the pitch is we're going to get whoever we think we can get because we can't get anybody else. And I don't think that's always the case. I want, I want to answer that in, in one way from the superintendent's perspective is it is important for us as administrators to follow a process. This one, it didn't. Okay. So we, we, we we're going to revamp, we go for it again. That process is going to be to use an interview team. I always post for five business days. Use an interview team. I talked with Joanna today, and and she's on board with that. And then once that's done, it's to call references. So that that will be the process. With that said and done, that means that we're going to do everything we can to bring you whoever is best out there. Cody's. The flip side of that is going to be on the board side, and we've talked some about this. And that is, if we do due diligence and we do the best that we can, that you're going to have to respect <laughs> that recommendation. Yeah, right. But there, it's a two-way street. We both have our jobs to do. Right. And that's the reason I wanted this discussion tonight. And there was discussion about, do we do it in closed session? No. This is something that people... No, I, I totally agree. We should be completely transparent. That's correct. With what we're talking that's about. That's right. And I think, you know, people don't understand how difficult it is for a board member to know where those lines are. And people don't know how difficult it is to choose the right, the, the, good, the best people. So that's the reason I wanted to turn this into a discussion that I think would help all of us for the future and help for the superintendent. So that is my response. So I respect that, but this was handled wrong. This The, the protocol wasn't handled right. Uh, I looked at the guy's resume He's had 16 different jobs in how many years? Well, I don't want to. I don't okay, want to go okay, into but, personal but, stuff. But I'm just saying we need to use a little bit better process on how we're doing things and what we're doing instead of just saying we can't get anybody and then we just grasp at straws. Okay, we'll come back to what I said earlier. And, and I, it's, it's not a debate tonight. It, it truly is. No, it. it's not. But, you know, when you get some of these jobs and you have – I'll use the girls' basketball job. I'll use a prime example. You know, we had three that applied. I think I'm correct in that. One pulled the application. The other one did not show up, and the other one did, and she was good. 
we're lucky in that. But sometimes it gets down that narrow that there's not there's not many choices. Now the choice is don't hire any of them and go back out again, which you can do. But when you do that, you're going to get later in your season, and later and later you get in the season, then then they start snapping up. So you deserve as a board, you deserve a process from from us or from whoever's coming in. But the other part is there's going to be you're going to have to find those lines within yourself of where you do have to trust staff. But we got to get to that point, and we're not to that point no. with me myself. I can't speak for anybody else, but after the last seven years, we haven't we haven't got there yet. So we need to get to that point. Correct. Then we can establish those lines and boundaries. Until then, if I think this district is going to hire somebody that I don't see as a fit, all I'm going to say is I don't think they're a fit, and this is why. You keep bringing up the last seven years, and I went through a lot of the hires that I've made. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to defend myself. No, you you don't. The, the, the hires that I've, you know, we've got a pretty good coaching staff. Right. I, just, I believe in a lot of those guys and girls, and uh, a lot of them are my friends, and I'll stand up for them. And uh, there's been times we haven't had anybody. Right. And whenever we have to hire somebody, we have to ask them if they would take in coaching, and that's been in the last three years. And they have offered to do that, or else our girls would not have had anybody to defend them. And they played. They didn't go in to coach, and they don't want to coach anymore. I've had people in those positions that I had to get rid of because they were not a good fit. <coughs> and I, I had to. But you weren't here at that time when I had to make those decisions. But when you don't trust your admin team, that's a big line there. And I can tell you that that was part of my decision of re resigning also. I didn't stop my husband from taking the job or going in and applying because that support system's not there. And I hope that you put that support system behind whatever admin comes in behind us. Because it is not helpful for your kids. That is because you're about to get a brand new staff. And that that is very true, which is why we did what we did and why we brought in a new superintendent to, to change the things that the way the things are going. So I, I get it. There's a lot of change, a lot of things going on, and things are gonna be different. So I completely understand where you're coming from, but but that's why we hired a new superintendent to change the old to make it better for what we have coming in the future. I hope so. And there's going to be some shifting because if you can't find a coach for a particular position, you may have to tell yeah. the teacher, that's what Cindy was talking about, and move them in a coaching spot just to cover that too. And, and they've got to be able to, to do that as well. Okay. Can I add something as far as the committee part goes? With subs, it's really hard to get coverage to get a large committee. Um, we were able to do it for the counselor position because our counselors don't cover room full of students during the period of the day. And when you get into the spring, you get into a lot of different activities. And so creating that committee of three, four, five people, making sure you have coverage for them, subs, and then having that correlate possibly on multiple days because people have obligations with their current positions that they're coming in and applying for. They may not make it on Wednesday. Well, now you've got to convene that committee again on Thursday or Friday. And so when you involve the committee, you're involved in a lot of different schedules and a lot of different coverage. And that's just part that's of the, terrible. part of the uh, you know challenge that it takes place on just because of Subs are not there. Other discussion? So the head girl's job is going to be posted again, I'm guessing, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm assuming when you said it's a very young team, it's a change of roster is why she backed out. 
yes. and change of expectations. She thought she would have a more experienced team, and then when things happened over the spring, it's not going to be as experienced. But, so, you know, if I were a coach, and you know, mm -hmm. trying, trying to make my name, I don't like it, but I understand. Sure. Yeah. But I think the bottom line is we have to get people in here that fit our community. Mm -hmm. And we've declined a few and it is nothing personal against the admin, but it's just the fact, the reason we hired Ms. Brashear was because she came in and said, I do investigate through backdoor channels and I need to know this stuff before I bring somebody to y'all. Mm -hmm. And if Keith wouldn't have brought this to our attention, I don't know that you know we'd be hiring somebody right now that is essentially wasn't brought back for a reason in his previous job. I think this is going to be one of those things that you as a board, superintendent administration, you're going to really have to talk through and decide you know, where those boundaries and those lines are between everybody. But I think this is, because this is one that, that I heard when I came in. Mm -hmm. You've heard it too, it's not new news. And the only way that you can, you can deal with it is to really have some crucial conversations. There's going to be some missteps. That's okay, but you have to move in a direction where you can trust both ways. Critical for the school district. Critical for the school district. You know, when, when I came in, I said, and I can pontificate a little bit tonight because I won't be here long. But, um, but you know, one of your big things that I heard out and about was governance, and this is the piece of governance. This was this was the piece. So. So work through it as a team, but make sure you've got a, a team when you do that. And that team has got to be your administrators, it's got to be your superintendent, it's got to be you. But y'all need to, to hit a comfort zone of how it's going to work. And then you have to stay within that. With respect from administration, you and from Mr. Danley, it, ha it has to be that team. Moving forward with the new superintendent is what we're hoping is going to happen by, by doing that, by making that change. Mm -hmm. That's why we did what we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and even with the new superintendent, though, you're still going to have those conversations because she doesn't know. Nobody knows. No, but what a great place to start. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But involve everybody. You know, it, this is not just a, a board superintendent. It's going to be your, your key administrators. I mean, those are the ones that are, that are going to get involved in it. But it really needs to be a discussion. Now, she will be your conduit. I always look at it like an hourglass. She's the middle of that hourglass up and down. And so, but, but this, is, this is the issue that, that, the big issue that has to really be addressed pretty quickly. Keith, you got anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm listening and thinking and I'm trying to understand to form my words how I want to say it um, you know I, I don't I'm not hired to hire people it's not my job and I don't I don't I don't want to be in your shoes and I don't I don't I understand the difficulties of it but I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do you know I grew up five miles from Holland I know a lot of people from Holland there's a lot of people on this board know people from Holland and we're, and we're not getting into personnel, personal discussions. But I feel like I had to speak up or would speak up for this situation just because I, I, if I, don't, I don't like the process. I haven't liked it since I've been on the board. I, I don't like telling somebody they have a job pending board approval. And then when that name comes out, that's when we get hit with it from public, from people that know us, from people. And it's nothing against Coach Roden. There's, well, there's people that know me that don't know Coach Roden. And, and I, not that I don't trust Coach Roden, but I, I'm honest. If I'm honest with you, I, I trust. But that's one thing about people. personnel. We don't get all of that background either because it's right. not legal for us. And so we don't know how much of that is true. I don't because, either. And that's right. what we're getting at because right. we get told one thing 
and then everybody else hears something else because right. by legal, yeah. they yeah. can't say anything. So no. whether out in the public, they're just talking, just like things that happened around here when it went out in public and people were talking, it wasn't true because nobody found out what the actual truth was. Yeah, and that, but that's what um, that's what I'm struggling with. I mean, that's what we but we all struggle with. Yeah. You know, um, I understand. I mean, I want to respect. I get. I understand that, but I want to. From my perspective, I want to make sure that, you know, you have to, it almost comes down to nuts and bolts. There has to be somebody that can coach these kids. You know what I mean? There has to be somebody that can drive a bus to the games. Does that make sense? I mean, and I, I look at it like, well, if, and not just, not just, I'm just saying it in general. I'm talking about this particular hire. You know, it's, if we don't hire A, I don't know if we're going to get a B. You know what I mean? And now, okay, we have some that can't drive a bus. All right, now I've got to figure out, okay, i got to switch this person to this sport because they can drive a bus. So there's a lot of, you know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it that I hope y'all are aware of from, you know, my perspective, if that makes sense. I mean, does it? Yeah, and a lot of times we're not aware of your perspective because we don't, we don't get it. And that's why I wanted to <laughs> so, I mean, so not, that not, you could understand each other's perspective. Well, what, I mean, so, I mean, what, are, what, what do y'all need from me? I mean, for every hire that we make to call y'all individually, you know, that's, I'm not. I'm not sure we know know the answer. I, I can I can tell you on this particular one. If you bring him back next month, I'm voting no. I'll tell you that. Okay. I'd rather not have a nut or a bolt than that nut or bolt. <laughs> I'll put it that way. And that's that's understandable. Like I said, but, I'm, but, I, but I'm I'm and I, I don't want to be the hiring person, but I can't ignore. But I just like I said in the beginning, I hope y'all are aware of. Yeah. The fact that we may not get anybody else. Yeah, and we I may not get I'm, anybody I'm, else. And I'm also aware I don't want to create a toxic environment where we're getting one application. I, I want, I want, well, Rogers, it's, I want Rogers Mr. to get Cole, this not, I'm going to stop you there. It's, it's not. Don't. It's not just us. No, don't take this as it's just Rogers. No. Because I mean, I, I want it. I want it. I want it to be a destination. I want everybody to love Rogers as much as I love it's, Rogers. And I want to be here. It's not. It's a lack. Please don't take how it. Many, like that. How many jobs were open when y'all went to coaching school? Oh gosh, there's a board. It's not Rogers. It's the state of Texas. Yeah. And but it is Rogers as far as who we're talking about, and I can just tell you that. Um, this girl's basketball, hey girl's basketball job, it's going to be tough to find. Um, and obviously, the the other one is going to be even tougher to find. So neither one of our assistants want to do the girls' assistant basketball from the previous year. Um, Coach Mays and uh, Coach you know, Mays is doing it just. Uh, he was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. I don't think. I mean, I haven't. We haven't. This is really. There was this one and one previous that we questioned, and both of them would have been. One was shot down. The other one was tabled. This this particular one, but I don't think it has anything to do with their ability to coach. It's more of the situation that we we're looking i'm at least looking up for the kids in the best interest and also the staff that would be working with these particular people and it may not always be said to you because you're the boss but i'm friends you know like all of us are with a lot of these people grew up with a lot of these people and and, and you know they may just reach out and say i've got serious trepidation about this particular person so you know we'll, we sat around and, and 
discussed it in closed session two summers ago, I think it was, on one, and it was, you know, things that we, we can't share, but there were some very concerning things that had happened that we as a board didn't feel like we wanted to bring that in. And I don't know this person at all. All I know is um, some of the things that people, one person in particular reached out with me who's who's not, not <clears throat> doesn't have a, you know, oh, he's over in Holland. So that that's my only, was my concern about this particular one. But you are right, you, you've made some very solid hires and I don't, I mean, we haven't, I don't, I mean, I haven't questioned, you know, whatever they come across, you know, on our packet that, you know, I mean, I'll look at the name and, yeah, okay. <laughs> Sometimes, like you're, you say, they, they, they have to, they fill a spot for us, you know, and so that's understandable. When Ms. Brashear gets in, she's going to, you know, talk with all of you, obviously. And you are going to talk about what you need. Go back to your question, Charles. And then she's going to talk with the administrators, and we'll have a lot of new administrators in the district and find out what you guys need and then her job is to find that in between and how that's going to work and that is her job but at the end of the day there's seven people that's making a vote okay mm -hmm. so if i vote no he votes no so be it if we get out voted it is what it is yeah. so at the end of the day the decision will be ours we'll make the vote and if it works it works if it don't it don't but i don't i don't think if it if it doesn't work, that the board should be held accountable for every decision. We're, I feel like here lately, we're targeted as kind of like what you said, you're worried about what's fixing to happen. Well, how do you know that great things aren't going to fix and happen? You don't. We're talking about things that's happened in the past. What What's happened in the past has led up to this moment. Where? So I, has it been this bad in seven years? Yes, it has, and it that, has? that's yeah, it has. That's that's what I'm saying. Well, I, but the difference I call is, Mr. Craig, a friend, so is I and, and that's okay. But the difference is, is I'm willing to say it. These other guys may not say it to you, but I'm gonna sit here and say it in public, and I don't mind saying it. So things have not been all rosy. They they haven't been as good as what everybody wants to think, and so change is coming. We, we needed to change, and it could be good if y'all just give it a chance. But, I but, but I'm not. a 5-2 vote, and you do that, you're, you're gambling that you're not going to have anybody in the position. And I agree with that, but if I know for a fact that I feel as strongly as I know what he's saying and what he's saying about an individual, I'm going to take that risk because that's what I got elected to do. That's, that's why I'm here. Ideally, you want to have a system in place so that you don't have to be put in weird positions. Correct. They don't have to be put in weird positions. The point is to find out how to do that the best that you can. Correct. You don't know what that is tonight. It's okay. But but to get there is really important. But this just didn't happen tonight. This is this has been a I know. a I situation know. that's gone on for years and years and years. Right. And I just want to make that clear. Oh, I'm so clear, it's I, not anything that y'all are doing right at this moment. I've said the hot seat, Cody, for the last <laughs> 10 years, it's, okay? It's just been brewing to this point, and it's like, okay, uh, our, our mindset is we want to make it better. Like, we're trying to figure out how to get to this point, how to get to where, we, where you say, hey, I want to make this higher, and I say, man, I feel good about that. Let's go. That's what we're trying to establish. I, th I think everybody is trying to make it better. Yeah, I agree with that. I think administrators, I think the board is trying to make it better. It's how do you do that? It's not the what. Right. You know what the what is. The way you do that it's is you start with the lady that's coming in, mm -hmm. and then you go from there. Correct. And with the lady that's coming in, again, she will take what you need, and she will take what they need, and she will develop a process, and it won't be perfect, but it will be, a, it will yep. be something new, and it, it will be something to try. And I will say this to not only be pessimistic on things, but you're not going to have a 100% perfect hiring. Any place, anywhere, anything to True. Do. You're, you're going to have some that they just don't work out. Don't know why. So, um, I don't think anyone can expect to come in and everybody's going to be great. It's just not right. You do the you do the best you can as human beings at a point in time. That's all you got. 
There's, there's another point to this too. And I mean, there's job shortages everywhere. Education, every trade there is, every everybody I talk to on a daily basis, they're looking for help. And I, I get that. I, I'm, I mean, my wife has been in education. My, my family has been in it. I completely understand that. So I, I feel like you just, you just got to keep plugging away until you find the right individual, figure out ways to do it. I think our new superintendent is going to have some great ideas on how to do that. So I think it can be done. It's just, it's going to be tough, but it can be done. I, I, I firmly believe that. I'll share one more thing. The school I'm going to, 58% of them are not certified. Two are certified in the area that they're supposed to teach. Four are certified in not the area because they could not find anybody. And I, they did a $5,000 stipend in order to get somebody that was willing to go and get their associate and get their teaching degree. Mm -hmm. So there are places. We don't know how good we have it. Mm -hmm. We have it very good with the staff that we have and the numbers that they're producing. It's amazing and with have, what we do. I have to back that. Coming from the, I meet with people all over the state almost on a weekly basis in the position I'm in. And in testing, I was shocked last year when they had to change our TELPASS testing requirements because there are so many places, particularly as you get farther south, that do not have a single certified teacher in kindergarten or pre-K. They're just hiring people. And the, we, they couldn't use the qualifications to test telepaths. And so they had to go through and change our state requirements because of the lack of teachers. And that's something we gotta be careful about because it's gonna hit everywhere, guys. I see it. The younger generation isn't willing to do what I have done. I just came from the Valley Inn a couple weeks ago and we were at two school districts and they were in the same situation that Cindy was saying. Uh -huh. they, they had a lot of people that were not certified. Do so, we have those people here? No. I don't think so. Anybody that's not certified here? We have been lucky. Yeah, we have. If we had it anybody, they were getting their own training. Right. And it's unacceptable. And then we say it turned out to be phenomenal. I'm going to give you a frame of reference. Eons ago, when I taught superintendent in Slido, there were 60 applicants. Now the average number is 15 across Texas. So that has changed too. People are not stepping into those roles. You can even analyze why or why not. But that's just one, and those positions tend to pay a lot more. So you get into teaching positions or care professional positions like these four ladies that we're here tonight, and it gets more and more and more difficult. Well, it's too bad that most everybody that, that has made it known that they're going to leave here for various reasons is leaving. It'd be great if people would just give it an opportunity and uh, see see what happens and and what what goes on but it's but it's understandable i mean everybody nobody likes change and it's it's coming so it's it is what it is with that being said though i mean we did vote seven oh to for all of our administrator contracts yep. year after year after year yep. it's not that we don't have confidence in any of those guys the confidence or the transparency was at on the three two two vote yeah and that's just i don't know how privy y'all were to things but it just was time to make this change, and it had nothing to do with anybody other than that one particular person. Uh, yes, that will be a future agenda item, and that will be an agenda item for both staff, and it will be for the board, but that, that needs, needs to be addressed. We all know that. Charlie, thank you for presenting tonight. You're welcome. It's not an easy conversation, but we don't grow if things are easy normally. All right, Mr. President. We're going to move on to action mm -hmm. item 7B, yes, consideration and approval of engagement letter for auditor. The district recommends once again engaging the services of Singleton 
Clark and Company. The fee for 2024-2025 remains the same as in 2023-2024 at $28,200. Any questions or comments on that? All right, I hear a motion to approve Singleton, Clark, and Company. That's a move. I say. Got a motion from Mr. Mark. Second from Mr. Cox. Any further discussion? I don't think so. All in favor, show of hands. Motion carries. Seven. Action item 7C is the consideration and approval of policy committee recommendations. Um, so the policy committee met last month, um, two months now, and we used the board's needs assessment, uh, which was completed in January, and we developed some short-term goals. Uh, these were sent out earlier with no additional comments to other board members. Uh, the policy committee recommends the adoption of the short-term goals uh, to be followed up with district board and superintendent goals setting going into the 2024-25 school year. So the first goal was hire a great superintendent who meets the needs of Rogers ISD staff and students. And again, these were short-term goals. So uh, number two, work with the new superintendent on the development and alignment of district board superintendent goals beginning in August of this year. Ensure quality board training, including but not limited to attending the SLI as a team of eight. Uh, educate the board on policies. And lastly, model a culture, culture of perpetual learning for the staff and students of Rogers. Because we all have seen this. Yeah. Yes, we all saw that. Had a chance to comment on it. As we stand now, any other questions or comments? Comments? All right. So I hear a motion to approve the short term goals approved by the Board Policy Committee. <coughs> so moved. So second. Got a motion for Mr. Green, second for Mr. Cox. No other questions, I believe. All right. All in favor, show of hands. Motion carries. Um, all right, and I've got it on here. Can I get a motion for the adjournment? I want to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move. Okay. Motion for Mr. Mark, second for Mrs. Fox. The motion carries. Yes, seven to one. I've got a time of seven forty-four. So we have the motion to adjourn the bill. All right. All we've been looking. Yeah.